it. I am here not just because I'm a meteorologist, but because I love snow. That's me. There is nothing I love doing more than skiing through deep powder, and I think we share that um, here in this room. So who am I? Just really briefly. I grew up outside of Philadelphia. Any people here from Pennsylvania? You escaped. Good job. <laughs> Uh, I was a ski racer. I was not very good. I have a degree in meteorology from Penn State. I've loved weather since I was age four. So I, this is my entire life has been about weather. My first powder experience was not until age 20 in Alpine Meadows. Before that, I didn't know there was anything else aside from a loose granular on 700 vertical feet at Shawnee Mountain. I have a degree, in, uh, grad degrees in environmental studies and business from CU Boulder. Um, I began forecasting snow in Colorado in 2005 purely because I wanted powder and I'm thrilled that I found a lot of other people that share that passion. I started Open Snow in 2011 and I've written daily weather updates uh, throughout the winter ever since. So here's what I am confident about. To forecast snow in Colorado one to ten days in advance. Before the rest of my talk I want to be very clear. I am not an expert in climate change. We're going to discuss <laughs> trends. But I'm not an expert in climate change. Just like your uh, general physician is not a knee doctor, I know meteorology, I understand the science, but I'm not necessarily a climatologist. I will provide data, though, about the recent climate in the western US, and I'm going to talk about a report that was put together by 46 scientists that are incredibly intelligent that uh, focus on Colorado. So here's what I want to start with. We all talk about the global temperature, or the temperature across North America. That's hard to conceptualize. What's easier to conceptualize is what's going on here right at home. So I picked out a bunch of backcountry weather stations to look at around the state of Colorado. The first one I wanted to look at is Beartown. This is a backcountry weather station. It's a snow tail site put in by the government. This is our government tax dollars at work and they've done a very efficient job with our money. It's awesome. By the way, you can make fun of government waste all you want. This program, the Snowtail program, is incredible. This Snowtail site is in the San Juans, not too far from here. This is from about the last 25 years or so and temperatures have increased about three to four degrees. But you say, Joel, this is just one site. You're absolutely right. Let's look at another one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No snow. No snow, yeah. Can somebody, well, at least the power's still on. Last talk I gave until you right, the power went off. There we go. Play snow show, yeah, play slide show. Sorry about that. Yeah, great. So that's Bear Town. Mesa Lakes. We're going to do a counterclockwise or clockwise loop around Colorado. Mesa Lakes up in the Grand Mesa by Grand Junction. Temperatures in the last 30 years have increased about 2 to 3 degrees. All right, let's keep going. Schofield Pass between Aspen and Crested Butte. <coughs> Temperatures have increased 2 to 3 degrees. How about Hoosier Pass over by Breckenridge? Temperatures have increased 2 to 3 degrees over the past 30 years. How about Dillon? Now this is a cool one. Dillon is in Summit County right off of I-70. This is about a 100 year record. It's tough to get a long term record in the mountains. You can see that temperatures have still, over 100 years, increased 2, 3, 4 degrees. So in general, temperatures not just globally have increased, but right here. Right? This is not some kind of abstract phenomenon. Right here in Colorado, they've increased. and this is many hundreds of weather stations across Colorado put together for the last 115 years and temperatures have increased, two, three, four degrees. These are not just mountain weather stations, these are everywhere. Now, can you find a weather station that has not increased in temperature? Absolutely, but on the balance, most have. Now, this is a projection of about 40 different versions of climate models for the next 30 years or so, out to 2050. That big box on the left, the star shows Colorado, the colors show the increase in temperature, the projection, for the next 30 years or so, right around 2050. And they average another two, three, four degrees higher. Basically saying we're just going to stay on the same trajectory. Now the upper right is the warmest of those 40 or so models. They show even more warming. The bottom right shows the coolest of those models. Even the coolest models show a couple of degrees of warming. 
So we cannot be absolutely certain that we know a forecast 30 years into the future, but this is really good science. This is the best we know that most likely temperatures will continue to increase. Now let's look at precipitation, because we're talking about snow. Now this is Beartown, here in the San Juans. No trend in precipitation. How about Mesa Lakes? Uh-oh, hopefully this goes again. Do, 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 do. There we go, Mesa Lakes, no trend in precipitation. Schofield Pass, no trend in precipitation. Hoosier Pass, <laughs> put up, put up uh, absolutely no snow in Hoosier Pass. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Here we go. No trend, and I'm nervous to even click here. Oh, boy. Well, I'll just tell you, once we get this back up, yep, just hit that one more time. Perfect. Can you just hit this, the, uh, the space bar to keep going forward? Perfect. So that's Dylan's precipitation over 100 years. You can see some cycle in there, but generally no trend. Space bar one more time. So this is our prediction for 50 years, or out of 2050, you see kind of some bland colors in here. That means that the models are split. The wetter models show that it's gonna get wetter. The drier models show it's gonna get drier. So the average of all the models is, we don't know. Now, does that mean that precipitation will not change? Absolutely not. That just means we have no confidence, really, in which way it will go. If we get more precipitation, that kind of is a little bit of a blessing, or it could be, but if we get less precipitation, that could be quite scary for an already arid region. Spacebar, please. Thank you, yeah. Spacebar, one more time, click. All right, so let's summarize this. Temperatures have increased by two to three degrees in the last 30 years, and they will likely continue to increase, click. Precipitation, no trend, and there's low confidence in the future. We just don't know, click. So here, this, we don't need weather models to necessarily put those two things together. Warmer temperatures equal precipitation, likely higher rain snow line, warmer temperatures, that's pretty simple, and exacerbating drought conditions. Warmer temperatures means more evaporation of the moisture. Click. Yeah. Okay. So if you want more information, you can Google Climate change in Colorado 2014, all of this is from a phenomenal, phenomenal click uh, report that looks like this. Let's see if we can do it. There we go. It is very readable. It takes you about 10 minutes to go through the bullets. You want to educate yourself? This is phenomenal. Absolutely great. Now let's talk about one more thing before I'm done. Click. The future of skiing, that's what you came to see. What do I think? All right, click. Finding colder temperatures is the key in a warming world. That might sound obvious, but that's one of the big points. Next, higher elevations will be the best. Colorado is nicely positioned, actually, with higher elevations across the West. I'm not trying to remove the seriousness of climate change, but to think about all the places that we ski, the higher elevations of Colorado are actually nicely positioned to hold colder temperatures further into the future. Click. So if you're already near the rain snow line, some place like the Pacific Northwest or in California, that's concerning. This is not, again, that the world's going to end, but the world is changing. And if you're already close within a degree or two of rain snow, that's concerning. Click. Now remember, those changes that I showed, those are gonna project to occur over decades. So we might see things now these are things we're thinking about looking at and seeing over the next 10 to 20 years. Click. So a lot of people ask me, well, what happened this past season? Is this indicative of climate change? Well, then we actually have great news. This is the snowpack compared to average as of a few days ago. Everywhere across the West is 102 for 100% of average. That's awesome. Let's celebrate the fact that we got a lot of snow this year. Next slide. This is precipitation since October 1. We are above average, 100 to 150% of average. This is awesome. So this is slightly, you can't look at climate change on a year by year basis necessarily, but let's just celebrate the fact that we did get a lot of precipitation. This is phenomenal. Next slide. Click. So people ask me, here are the couple questions I'll end with. 
We had a dry start this past year, and everybody was freaking out. Technical term. Okay. In October and November. Well, guess what? We've had dry starts in about a third of the years of the last 40 years. I don't necessarily see a trend in that. So let's not tie that to climate change just yet. Rain during the winter in Colorado. We had a warmer storm track from the southwest this year, so I'm not surprised that we had some warmer storms. I did look at two stations, uh, Crested Butte, higher elevation, and Steamboat, lower elevation, and did not see a long-term 100-year trend of more rain events during the winter. However, there was a trend in the last 20 or 30 years toward a few more rain events. This was a quick study. This is not a, you know, a long-term in-depth study. But that does tell me that the warming temperatures may contribute to more rain events during the winter, at least the last couple decades. Next. Tons of snow in California. Was that due to climate change? <coughs> Weather patterns and how they're impacted by climate change, we just don't know yet. We just don't know. There's a lot of research trying to figure it out, but we just don't know. So tying individual types of storms and patterns to climate change is just too early to know what will happen to that. Next slide. So I'm gonna, there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of a downer in this talk, which is temperatures are getting warmer, snow levels are going to increase. So I wanted to end with just a little positivity, which is how I like to forecast powder days. Seven to 10 days out in advance, we know enough to know that a storm might be coming, but the models are not good enough to know the details. So I say, toast the possibilities, that's it. Four to five days out, we know enough. The models are pretty good now. They've gotten better in the 10 years that I've been doing this. I say, now's the time to start clearing your calendar. David would be happy if you got an email from me four to five days in advance. We know enough. And two to three days in advance, for all the working folks, you start putting emergency all over your desk. <laughs> to pretend like you're getting sick <laughs> so that when you're not there in a couple of days, there's plausible deniability. <laughs> right? Because we have enough confidence two to three days out that we generally know that a storm is coming. Next slide. Please email me if you have questions, joel at opensnow.com, to recap, temperatures are increasing. We don't know what's gonna happen to precipitation. Higher elevation is best. It's very likely that we'll have more drought higher rain snow line elevation, and more rain events during the winter. But we're still going to have snow, um, so all hope is not lost, but this is a serious challenge that um, we should look into, learn about, and please Google climate change in Colorado 2014. Thank you guys so much.